Good morning or good morning. So I uh, just wanted to do a bit of a, um, I guess, a market recap. Uh, Euro on the Euro specifically, I guess, because that was where all the fireworks were. Um, yesterday where all eyes were on. And um, uh, yeah, I just wanted to really go through how we... Um, you know, uh, saw the euro and uh, this was all documented and basically what ended up playing out. And it's a really good uh, example and exercise of how really to trade the news. It's not how, um, you know, most retail traders, you know, 99.9% .9 of retail traders will trade the news. Um, and I really go over this as well, that, you know, in depth. If you go to the trading uh, videos channel and on um, Wednesday's group call, 8th of June, you know, we really break this all down um, in in this um, before, you know, trading, um, before the news came out. Um, but this is obviously just 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 a recap. So this is just showing you that you know I'm not just talking and and uh, you know not not you know this is a hindsight bias. This is you know how we trade the news you know uh, all the time and how to capitalize. And in that video, you know we we, we got the evidence that really um, we were prepared that if. Um, you know, the euro didn't say, or the ECB and Christine Lagarde didn't say anything um, new, that um, probably the euro would be a at least a short-term uh, sell. And we saw evidence of that um, uh, recommended by ING, um, who was saying that it was probably going to reach, um, you know, maybe 105 if nothing happens, right? Because um, you know, the news had already been priced in, yeah, so they already knew what, you know, was expected to happen, unless there was, unless there was, you know, a hawkish, um, a very hawkish tone where they were um, maybe insinuating that there would be, you know, more hikes uh, coming than usual, or, 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 or um, more hikes or, or bigger hikes, then um, that may have been a reason to uh, maybe buy the euro, but pretty much it came out as expected. And you know, going back to the to the Discord room, um, you know, Ken basically put this out, and I'm not going to read everything, but pretty much um, it was as um, expected, right? There was nothing new that the market um, saw in the data, really. Um, and in the release that would have um, caused the euro to kind of, you know, fly off the hook. Now, um, you know, Ken made a comment. He said, uh, bearish, I think for now, this will also depend on the path of inflation. And, uh, you know, I pretty much, you know, agreed. So, um, so again, it was pretty much as expected. So I made the comment at the time. And again, this was, uh, you know, 137 uh, time stamped. I said nothing new. So I was commenting on... Um, Ken's uh, picture, right, on, on his post. So I said, nothing uh, nothing new. And um, so I said, it looks like the, uh, the, the euro is drawing traders to go long, right? And, um, and then Ken, you know, has this uh, uh, great gif, as, uh, we have, and we will be there to take them out, right? So again, just going through the details, you can read back through the uh, through what I was saying and what I was discussing with Ken um, as to the reasons why probably in the short term you may want to continue to have a, a, a maybe a short bias or at least um, um, if you are going to trade the euro not necessarily have to trade the euro of course but you know I, I, I figured to myself that you know um, the euro um, you know because nothing had come out and we had seen you know certain forecasts from ING that it was going to go to or may go to 105 or in the, at least in the short term if nothing new comes out um, that was really the bias so when I said that you know traders were being you know drawn into going long and Ken said you know we'd be there to take them out is because we were then waiting for you know a certain setup and that was pretty much what was happening right across the board all the euro um, you know traders <clears throat> who were looking at this, all the price action traders who were looking, yeah, at, you know, this in real time at around the time that we were talking about. So around that 130 mark. So replay. So that was, again, that, that bar had finished. So that was around, you know, uh, one, one o'clock. This is a 30 minute chart. 130 so this would have drawn traders to go long right trade price action traders who believe in momentum and you know uh, uh, breakout traders you know you've got to take that this is where the market's telling you to go the market's not telling you no such thing it's doing the opposite 
right? If you don't know the fundamentals, if you don't understand what's going on behind the scenes, you're just going to get drawn in to, uh, to, to, to these types of moves and then get caught, right? So what ended up happening was is that this ended up being a nice uh, level uh, of, of, of a stop hunt um, and prices would have drawn traders in. So as you know, the retail traders are doing a buying, which is the liquidity for what? the sell orders, right? So if I want to be a shorter of the euro, I'm gonna need enough buy side, I guess you want to call it buy side liquidity, um, but if you want to you know, call it um, liquidity buy orders in order to facilitate you know, the amount of sell orders that you want to do, right? Or you, want to, you want to take in. So if I need you know, a billion pounds worth of um, sell orders yeah, at various prices you know, and the higher it goes, it's cheaper for me, I need a you know a billion pounds worth of um, a liquidity uh, buy orders right if I'm selling if I need those short orders right so that's basically when everyone was going long right based off price action not understanding what was going on fundamentally not prepared or anything like that guess what was happening the smart money was doing the absolute opposite taking out the liquidity above obvious levels and then right look what we see today. Right, look what we see right now. Anyone who's going long has pretty much got caught and this happens time and time and time again. I explain it in you know in the um, in this video as well where you'll see um, you know uh, we, we go over this and uh, again in real time you know I was we were, we were basically just insinuating that that was pretty much what was you know likely to happen right so um, yeah, it's it's it happens time and time again. I'm not saying that we you know we we actually uh, you know knew 100% this was going to happen, but we did prepare. We said if this happens, then that is likely to happen, and um, and so yeah, there was some there was there, there was some decent trade setups. So let's not only did there was a you know stop hunt on the Euro New Zealand. There was a, there was quite a few stop hunts. Matter of fact, um, Euro CAD, right, and also as well if you go to um, you know the the this video as well, the sixth of June, the weekly technical analysis video. Again, you can find that in the uh, that was this video here, right? Weekly technical analysis. Um, I talk about you know the levels that we're looking at um, and understanding that you know nobody knows. That's why you got to see question marks there. Nobody knows which level is going to you know stop hunt. Right? It's like we look for the setup. Um, and if the setup occurs around those levels, it's just we're just watching those levels, right? But you can see that I have an alert set around that, just beyond that, or just below that 1.67 level, right? Which is basically what ended up happening, um, and that's on the Euro New Zealand. So if you go back to the Euro New Zealand, um, see back to the Euro New Zealand, yeah, 1.67, which is pretty much uh, around here, right? The alert was there. Um, that was where we were looking for, you know, the, um, uh, the 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 stop hunt to occur, right? And it pretty much, you know, ended up playing out. So, so, um, so yeah, it's not something that you know this is you know hindsight bias or anything like that. If you go back through, you know, the videos, you'll be able to see, um, you know, the analysis and um, and yeah. So where are we at now? Um, really just uh, understanding the aftermath of the um, you know the euro not saying the euro is going to uh, you know go all the way you know to the downside but again going back to the euro dollar um, uh, you can see again you know traders being drawn into the upside and then all of a sudden it just takes out all the liquidity um, or takes them out but you know traded to blow in their accounts etc so um, yeah it's all about really the preparation yeah, the preparation um, before the fact, right? What is known is known. So if you're sitting there and you, you know, uh, thinking that you know I want to trade this event, yeah, really you're only trading, or you should be trading surprises, yeah. As far as the surprise being, if um, anything unexpected comes out. So unexpected meaning, um, especially with a central bank, whether they're you know very dovish or very uh, hawkish and sometimes euro the you know um, uh, central bank can be dovish or hawkish but also it, it, it depends on whether the um, uh, the the market really kind of believes them right so there was an article that came out 
um, which was from ING, which came out, which the headline was the ECB hawkishness, not enough to lift the euro right now. The implicit openness of to a 50 basis point hike in September by the European Central Bank delay was generated only short lived bounce in the euro dollar. We think that rising uh, peripheral spreads and grim growth outlook, again, we are speaking about that with Ken in, the, in that conversation in Discord um, in the eurozone are keeping the euro at check and that uh, a return to 105 remains uh, likely we knew that before the fact and again our view remains that current unstable environment for global sentiment as a, as the Fed pushes through with 50 basis point hikes during the summer the dollar should remain supported as we don't see markets having a solid basis for turning substantially bullish on the euro right again that's the economic side of things we were discussing it uh, right here while I was discussing it me and Ken were discussing it and we were just saying that um, this was an article that was talking about the, the um, uh, Europe's, you know, economy and pretty much uh, Europe having stagflation worries, you know, yesterday, uh, da, 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 da. Um, you know, that was, you know, what was, you know, in play, I think, and behind the scenes um, and Euro given non-negligible downside risk to Eurozone's outlook, right? We continue to see a return to 105s as the most likely scenario over the summer and into Q3 of 2022. So several banks that are potentially forecasting a higher euro and ING and maybe some other banks are probably, you know, are looking at still being bearish on the euro. Either way, there's money to be made either buying the dollar, maybe not necessarily always against the euro, but maybe some other weak currencies. But we're in now that, um, I guess, if you want to call it uh, an auction, there's definitely auctions um, and upsides and downsides being capped. So there are opportunities to buy the euro against the dollar, but it's also, you know, and I think my bias would probably be more to lean towards any euro rallies being uh, sells, at least in, in, in the short term. So although um, I didn't quite get the entry that I was looking for, you know, um, around this area here, I was hoping that prices would have, you know, gone higher, you know what I mean, and then come back down. Um, Unfortunately, um, it didn't do that, but um, there is obviously an opportunity uh, to get long around here. Many of you, I'm sorry, short, if you did want to, many of you will see that or may not see it, but that now would be what I would consider to be a uh, CPR, that zone there, because it's definitely caught new traders going long. Yeah, um, not your typical CPR, but it's caught traders going long within that zone. Um, breakout traders so if price does come up you know around here i think that is going to be a very nice uh short uh trade or anywhere just below that and that's going to be a very nice uh, short trade and as well the stop hunt above that level around the 10790s um for me um is also still a sell as long as obviously when if prices do come up here that you know the the dollar is still um the, the the stronger out of the two currencies so guys um you know if you haven't got uh the time or try and make the time to watch the videos i know it's a long you know what we did on 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 wednesday was i think something like a two hour session or something like that yeah two hours 43 but all the information is relevant you, you're gonna have to you know even if you can't do it in one sitting um uh, in these videos all in one sitting uh, maybe you know do half an hour now maybe half an hour another day half an hour another day do you know what i mean they say what's the analogy how do you eat an elephant and one piece at a time so don't try not to you know you don't have to necessarily sit there watching you know the uh, uh all of the uh um the whole video all in one time just maybe break it down into into bite size um chunks so yeah it's all there all the analysis is there for you to read in real time um you know compare and contrast what i'm saying with what actually happened in the market before as well as you know obviously afterwards and you'll see um you know many many um again traders have probably been caught on the wrong side um euro new zealand being one uh euro cad euro aussie as well being one as well that was a level that ended up being stop hunted and at least if you had enough risk reward to the downside as we generally want you know, one of the profit targets is should be if you're aiming for any kind of profit target. I would definitely say 50% uh, of the uh, of the auction is obviously uh, a, a nice profit target, depending on the risk reward, and that would have been you know a really nice um, that would have been a nice uh, a nice trade second target probably down here. So yep, yeah, nice you know stop hunts 
that had set up in the Euro Aussie, Euro New Zealand, Euro CAD, um, and uh, some of the Euro trades, right? Anyways, um, take care, and uh, I will see you all uh, in the room later. Take care.